What's going on guys, ZTA Prime back here again. Recently I've done a couple videos on turning a desktop into an awesome little emulation PC using an operating system called Botocera. I've made a tutorial video and a few follow-up videos showing you how to configure for the internal hard drive and things like that, but overall the main question I'm getting is, can I do this on a laptop instead of a desktop? And the answer is, yes you can. Basically the only thing you have to do is follow my initial tutorial and replace the desktop with a laptop. Your performance will vary depending on the specs of the laptop you're using, but what I have here is a very low-end laptop. I picked this up in 2018 around Black Friday from Best Buy for $120. I've done a review video on it. I'll leave a link if you want to check that out also. But this is the Asus, or Asus, however you want to pronounce it, VivoBook E203MA. They go on sale all the time on Amazon and Best Buy, and I'm sure they do on Newegg and other sites too, for $120 to $140 depending on the RAM amount. The one I have here is the low-end model with 2GB of RAM, but it does run Botocera quite well. If you already have a laptop, you can go ahead and try Botocera on it. It's not going to hurt anything. Just boot from a USB drive. You're not going to change any configuration files in Windows, so all you have to do is pull that drive out, boot Windows back up. If it doesn't run well on your system, there's really not much you can do to increase performance. I mean, it is a laptop. There's really no upgradability in 99% of laptops out there. But this is a low-end laptop, and there are a lot of them out there that are much more powerful than this. Give you a quick rundown on the specs. For the CPU, we have the Intel Celeron N4000. This is a dual-core CPU. It does turbo up to 2.6, but it's usually around 1.1 gigahertz. 2 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. This is soldered to the board, and it is not user-upgradable. And the built-in GPU is the Intel UHD 600. So if you know anything about computers, you understand that this is a very low-end laptop. It actually does run Windows quite well, even with the 2GB RAM, and there are emulators that work fine in Windows, but if you want a standalone operating system to run your emulators on, I think Botocera is an awesome option. So in this video, I'm going to be testing out some emulators, some higher-end stuff, some stuff that doesn't run well on the Raspberry Pi, like GameCube, Dreamcast, PSP, N64. You won't see any lower end emulators in this video because the hardware is perfectly capable of doing NES, SNES, PC Engine, Super Graphics, uh, Game Boy Advance. I mean, there are tons of emulators that are going to run at full speed here. I want to test some higher end stuff that doesn't work well on the Raspberry Pi. For my specific setup, I did need a couple things. A Bluetooth or a wired controller. I'm going to be using a PS4 controller and I also have an Xbox One controller connected. A USB drive to run Botocera from. This is just a USB 3.0, 32GB drive. And unfortunately, I did need a Bluetooth adapter. Even though this laptop has Bluetooth built in, for some reason Botocera wasn't functioning correctly with Bluetooth, but it does work with Wi-Fi. And they're on the same module, so I don't know really what's going on here. But you can pick up one of these USB Bluetooth adapters for about $5 on Amazon. So let's go ahead and see how this thing performs. Everything's running from this USB drive. I've already set up inside of the BIOS to automatically boot from this drive when it's plugged in. So every time I want to play any of these retro games using Botocera, just plug it in, turn the computer on, and it boots up here. I've already configured both of my controllers. We are now synced up with the PS4 controller. We can play our games and navigate the menu with this wirelessly. And I also have this Xbox One controller configured. So this can be the second player controller. I have previously tested Game Boy Advance, Super Graphics, SNES, NES, and they all work fine here. And I knew they would because the hardware has more than enough power to push those emulators. What I want to see is PlayStation, GameCube, Dreamcast, PSP, and N64. In Windows, this actually runs N64 quite well with Moop N64 or Project 64. You can get full speed in pretty much any game as long as it's compatible with the emulator. And GameCube gets really close in Windows also, so it should perform pretty decently here. And by the way, this is totally on battery power. For this first game, I'm going to go through the main menu. I'm going to get into some gameplay. With the next ones, we're just going to skip right into it. I just want you to see how it functions throughout. I did turn on the FPS counter inside of Botocera, but unfortunately with GameCube or the Dolphin emulator, it only gives me a lag counter and a frames counter. It doesn't give me the exact frame rate at the exact time. With this one, we'll go with 150 cc, so we got the fastest carts. If you're familiar with the Dolphin emulator, it works on what's called shader cache. So you could play through a game and have a lot of stutters, but then the next time you go into it, you won't have any stuttering at all. I do expect to see a little stuttering here because I haven't tested this track yet.
And this is the lag counter up in the top left hand corner. We really can't tell much by it because it's not giving us the real time FPS. Straight out of the box, I can tell you right now it's running really good. We're really close to full speed at 60 FPS, if not right there at the edge. But then again, I did test this in Windows with the DirectX 11 backend on the same system in a previous video, and it actually really surprised me how well it ran on this lower end hardware. But overall, it's actually running pretty well. There are a few stutters here and there, and that's the shader cache being cached. There's really not much we can do except for restart the game, because then that shader's already cached and it won't do the stutter. Let's go ahead and move over to Soul Calibur 2. This is my go-to test. We'll see how this one performs. I've already played through two rounds so far, and it's actually performed really well. I did want to get two different stages in this video. We'll move on to the next one here. The Dolphin emulator's come a long way since its release, and to see it running on such low-end hardware like this is pretty amazing. This doesn't mean that every single GameCube game is going to run at full speed on this hardware here. There are some games that do require a little more oomph that this thing's just not going to put out. But for the most part, there are tons of GameCube games that are going to run on the N4000. And to exit the emulators, all you have to do is press start and the hotkey button you mapped. And we'll move on to N64. So here's 007. This is a darker game. I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit. But like I said, I have tested this in Windows, and Project 64 or Moopin runs even Conker's Bad Fur Day at full speed, so I expected this to work fine. So N64 is going to run pretty well in Botocera on the N4000. I did test out Rogue Squadron, but I could not get it to launch. Even on a higher end system, I just can't get it to launch in Botocera for some reason. Let's move over to PSP and see how that performs. Here's Tekken Dark Resurrection. Botocera uses PPSSPP. We can change the resolution. This is sitting at X1. I'm going to change it to X2. I think this is going to perform fine at that. But like God of War, you will have to leave it at the lowest setting. Even at X2, it makes a big difference on the graphics quality. Uh, as you can see, it just looks a lot better with this res. Here's God of War Chains of Olympus, one of the harder games to emulate. It's just giving me so much trouble on different hardware. And to see it running this well on this low end hardware is pretty awesome, but it's still not perfect. You will see dips here and there. I did drop it back down to 1x resolution, but to see God of War running like this tells me that there are a lot of PSP games that are going to run at full speed here. Let's say you want to do Ratchet and Clank, you could probably even go to 3x on hardware like this. Next up, we have some Dreamcast emulation. This is Sonic Adventure 2. Now, Botocera uses the Recast or the Raycast emulator and is doing a decent job, but I have seen ReDream in Windows on this laptop here perform much better. So if you want to do Dreamcast, I suggest using ReDream in Windows or Linux. 
Unfortunately, for Botocera, we only have the option for Raycast. And finally, for Dreamcast, we have Ikaruga. Now, this is one of my favorite shoot 'em up games. I play it all the time in an emulator and on the real console. We have a lot of slowdown here. Now, this is one that's always given me trouble with lower end hardware, so something like this is playable, but it's not ideal on low end hardware. I did have to throw PlayStation 1 in here because I know I'm going to have some people asking about it. Yes, it's going to work perfectly on hardware like this. I want to make this perfectly clear. I didn't make this video to tell you to go out and buy one of these laptops with an N4000 in it. If it was up to me, I'd actually spend a little more and get something a little more powerful. But what I wanted to show you was that a low-end laptop can do emulation with Botocera quite well. And the only true way to tell if your laptop that you have in your possession right now can emulate games like you just saw is to try it out. Follow my Botocera tutorial, links in the description and on screen now, flash it to a USB drive, and test it out for yourself because I don't have access to the same hardware you have and I can't test it for you. That's pretty much it for this video guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. All links for everything I mentioned will be in the description. I'll leave some Amazon links for the stuff I use. And like always, thanks for watching.